This call may be recorded or transcribed. Good morning, Brother Michael. Good morning, anybody there? Yeah. <laughs> 
Good morning. Thank you for calling Declare Victory. This is Felicita, who's on the line. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. I call it Wacky Wednesday. This is Sabrina. Good morning, Victory Prayer Line. God bless everybody. Good morning, Miss Sabrina. Happy Wednesday. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for calling Declare Victory. This is Valacita. Who else has joined us? Good morning, Valacita. It's Krishanda. God bless you. Good morning, Krishanda. God bless you as well. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Thank you. Good morning. This is JC. Good morning, JC. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. I have a quick prayer request. I've been having trouble with the app, so I... Anyway, I didn't put it on there because I couldn't get through. But uh, my baby girl, Jania, who you guys have been praying for, she had to have surgery again. This is like the fourth time. Um, they put a stent in her trachea, and it keeps moving. So she had surgery yesterday. So if you guys can please keep my baby in prayers for her health, she's going through a lot. And I thank you so much. And you have a blessed yes. day. You too, and we certainly will be praying for her. God Thank is the so healer, much. and we trust and believe in his healing power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning. Thank you for calling to Clear Victory. This is Valacita. Who else has joined us? Good morning, Good morning. Brother Michael. Happy, happy Wednesday. Good morning, Brother Michael. Happy Wednesday to you. Good morning, Sister Lisa. Happy Wednesday. God bless everyone on the call. And I have two prayer requests, please. Okay. The first one is for my first lady, my first lady, uh, Lucille Bomar. Her cancer has returned. So pray for her for healing. And also for all the children that have this anxiety. And uh, my granddaughter, Shalisha, is having a hard time that we had to uh, call the ambulance at her high school yesterday and take her to the doctor. And so I just, I know God is able. So we were going through a lot with her. Uh, it's been repeating, repeating. I've been praying. She gave her life to the Lord, but it's still happening. So I know God can move it. So thank you so much. Okay. So I just want to make sure I have the names correct. That's First Lady Bomar. Uh huh. Okay, and then can you repeat your your granddaughter's name? Shalisa S H A L I S A. And this is and she's been struggling with anxiety. Yeah, really, really bad. She's only sixteen, but it doesn't matter to her. But she's going through a lot. We had to go to emergency from her school yesterday. Yeah, okay, so well, we, we got her covered. <laughs> Thank you. you so much for Thank letting you. us know, <laughs> Sister Lisa. <laughs> God bless you. Good morning, Sister Yvonne. Happy Wednesday to you. You are right. God's got our back all the time. You have a blessed day. Good to hear yourself. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. It's Sister Tracy, and it's my birthday, and I'm celebrating oh. with my family. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, that's awesome. Happy birthday, Sister Tracy, and happy Thank Wednesday you. to you. Thank and you. I'm glad you're celebrating with your fam. That's awesome. Good morning, good morning. Thank you for this calling is Monica. Oh, good morning, Monica. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Good morning. Thank this you. is Ruth. Good morning, Ruth. Happy Wednesday. Same to you. I have Ishmael on the line. He's my niece's boyfriend, and um, my niece Alexis. We lost her on the fifteenth of um, of October, and so he's on the line, and we just want to pray for him. Um, he now is a single parent and has to raise two boys, and um, he's suffering from anxiety right now. So we want to keep him in prayer and also pray for our family. We have to go to the Bay Area and prepare to bury her this week. 
Thank you. Okay. Yes, okay. We got it. I got it down. Good morning. It's Thank Susie. you for letting us know. Good morning, Susie. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday to you, too. Thank you. Hey, BB. Good morning. It's Dee Dee. Good morning, Dee Dee. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Blessings to you. I'm lifting you up, Ishmael, and happy birthday, Tracy. Good morning. Thank you. This is Monica. Can I put in a prayer request for my family? family? Yes, but I hear um, hear, an echo. Can um, everyone please mute your phone? Mute your phone. Yes, hi, good morning. This is Danette. Good morning, Danette. Okay, was that Sister Monica I heard? I could hear an echo before. Yes. Okay. I'm ready for your prayer request, Sister Monica. Um, I wanted to pray. Um, I have uh, some drug addiction, um, discord. You know, it's just families falling apart. They fighting the kids. Uh, it's like a lot of uh, just, I want to say, discord and um Drug addictions. Okay. I got you down, Sister Monica. Um, I Thank also you. have a prayer uh, request. It's actually for tomorrow. My husband, Rick, is going in for a CT scan. So if we could please uh, pray for him for tomorrow. It's going to be on 3 o'clock tomorrow in Santa Clara. Okay, for a CT scan. Okay, for tomorrow. Thank you so okay. much. You are so welcome, Sister Susie. Okay, at this time, I'm going to ask everyone to please place your phones on mute, and we'll begin the hosting. Good morning, everyone. My name is Valuable Valacita, and I'm your host. Thank you for joining us here on Declare Victory. We are a prayer call that meets Monday through Friday, starting at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, and 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to edify, empower, encourage, and equip you in your walk with Christ. Be sure to continue joining us during the month of October. Our theme this month is forgiveness. All our declarations will focus on Abba's mandate to forgive others, even as we have been forgiven. Make sure you call in and be edified, encouraged, and empowered to live life out loud according to the will and purpose of God and His Holy Word. There are two announcements today. Today is the day that Declare Victory Fast for anything that you may be believing the Lord for. If you'd like to join in, push back your plate or something that you spend a lot of time doing and offer this time to the Lord in prayer. We will be fasting all day until 5 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time, well, we'll call back into the same phone number and have a quick closing prayer. Second, we would like to offer you an opportunity to put God first in the area of your finances. Our mission at Declare Victory is to offer sound declarations based on biblical truths along with prayer during the week and outreach participation to serve our communities in need. Will you partner with Declare Victory by giving to support our mission? There are three ways to give. You can give at declarevictory.org or through PayPal at paypal.me forward slash declare victory, or through Cash App at dollar sign, I declare victory now. We pray many blessings by our Heavenly Father be returned to you for your giving and trusting in Him. We have some prayer requests. The first one is for Tanya, not Tanya. Um, We're going to be praying for healing for Tanya. JC is asking for prayer for her daughter, Jania. She had her fourth surgery, and um, the stent has been moving. So we want to pray that the stent remains in place, and we want to pray for complete healing in her body. Um, Sister Lisa is asking for prayer for her first lady. Her name is First Lady Omar, praying for healing of cancer. And then we want to pray for Sister Lisa's granddaughter. Her name is Shalisa. We want to pray for anxiety for her. 
um, prayed that she be delivered from anxiety um, for granddaughter Shalisa. Um, sister, uh, sister, sister Ruth is asking for prayer for Ishmael. This is uh, her niece's boyfriend. Um, we're going to be praying for grief and for com- um, praying for deliverance from grief and comfort and strength for Ishmael. And Sister Ruth is also asking for prayer for her family as they prepare for the burial of her niece. Sister Monica is asking for prayer for her family. She's um, asking for prayer for deliverance from drug addiction and um, just to um, deliver them from the discord, discord in the family. Sister Susie is asking for prayer for her husband. He's going to have a CT scan tomorrow. So we're going to be praying for a good report from that scan in the name of Jesus. The order of the call is as follows. Prayer and corporate praise will be brought by Lisa Porter. Declaration will be brought by Dion. Then we'll go right into closing comments hosted by Dion. I'll repeat the order. Prayer and corporate praise will be brought by Lisa Porter. Declaration by Dion. And then closing comments hosted by Dion. The scripture for today is found in Luke chapter 7, verse 47. I tell you, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven, so she has shown me much love. But a person who is forgiven little shows only little love. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. At this time, we ask that you please place your phones on mute until instructed to come off of mute. And I just want to wish Sister Tracy a very happy birthday. I now pass the call to Lisa Porter. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. To whom much sins have been forgiven, they love much. Wow. Thank you, Father. Thank you for forgiving us of our sins, and they have been many. We thank you for who you are. And before we ask you for anything, we want to thank you for being God, for being in control, for being sovereign, for being amazing in our lives, for being everything that we needed you to be before we even knew that we needed you, for being there when we didn't know you were there, for looking out for us, for calling us out of darkness into your marvelous light, for writing our names down in the book of life before we even got here, for giving us a story before we knew we needed one, for giving us a name before we knew that we needed one, for giving us identity in you before we realized that we had none before you. We thank you that you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last before you. There was none after you. There will be none. We thank you for you are the all-sufficient, the almighty, the omnipotent, the everywhere present God. You are sovereign and in control, even when it doesn't look like it, when it doesn't feel like it, when everything seems to be going astray and it looks like the world is crazy and out of control. You are still a very present help in time of trouble. Even when we don't know the call out to you and cry out to you, you are still here. You said that you would never leave us nor forsake us, and I thank you, Father, that you know the end from the beginning, so much so that you wrote it down in 66 books and even some more. You're giving us visions and dreams. You've given us prophets. You've shown us some things to come. You declared in your word that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of the men, the things that you have prepared for them that love you, but you are revealing it to us by your spirit. So I pray that you open up our eyes of understanding, that you open up our spiritual ears that we can hear, especially now in these days when things seem to be going crazy. I thank you, Father, that you're still doing good things, that you're still working miracles, that you're still showing your mighty hand, that you still are completing what you've already decreed and established. Truth is, it's already done. We're just waiting for the manifestation for us to get in place. The 
earth is groaning and waiting for the sons of God to take our rightful place. So, God, we stand up today. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for giving us another opportunity to show up. Thank you for giving us a chance to get it right. We forget about yesterday. Some of us blew it big time. Some of us blew it last night. Some of us might have even blown it before we picked up the phone. But right now is a new opportunity, God, to forget those things that are behind us and to move forward and press. So now we have a new chance. We thank you, Father, for a new identity in you. We thank you, Father, for a new chance to get it right. Father, we repent of our sins, not to return to them no more, to look Look forward, God, to move forward. We thank you that you declared that there is now, therefore, no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. We are persuaded, God, that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor present things or anything to come, nor height nor death nor any creature, any creeping thing or no devil in hell shall be able to separate us from the love that you have for us, God, that is in Christ Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us in spite of ourselves. Thank you for loving us before we knew how to love ourselves. Thank you for teaching some of us that are still struggling in that area to love ourselves, God. It's not a matter of forgiving ourselves. It's a matter of accepting the fact that you already paid the price for us and called us forgiven, Jesus, when you gave up your blood on that cross. Help us to accept who are we to hold ourselves hostage to a price you already paid that only you can do for us on the cross? Thank you. Help us to see that the enemy keeps trying to trick us and keep us bound by that weight of sin that we've already been released and delivered from. Help us to see so that our minds can be changed. No wonder why you told us to let this mind be in us, which is also in Christ Jesus. The mind of Christ is free from sin, knowing exactly who he is. Thank you for making us new creatures and giving us uh, the, the identity to know that we've been created in your image and your likeness and that all things are possible to them that believe no matter what. I thank you, Father, that we understand why he comes after our faith why he comes after our hope, why he comes after our trust. But God, today we believe again. We trust you and we thank you. Hallelujah. For this month's topic of forgiveness. We walk in forgiveness and thank you, God, that we get an opportunity to make that choice today, several times today. For those that are struggling, I pray for strength in their belief system that you, God, will give us the strength, but you give us the ability to do everything by your spirit, Holy Spirit. Help us to yield to you this morning. Help us to yield those things that we held on so tightly, might have even been taught in the church. Help us to unlearn some things, God, unbelieve some things, God, release some truths that no longer serve us, Father. In the name of Jesus, we want to be new creatures that can walk in relationship and truth with you. I thank you, God, that we can speak truth to power and walk in that power by your spirit, not our own. God, in this flesh, well, there's no good thing, but by your spirit, you're living on the inside of us. Help us to recognize that there's some things that we can do to kill this flesh, and one can be to turn aside our plate today as we fast before you. We thank you for the opportunity to grow closer to you, to mature in our spiritual man and in our emotions. Thank you, Father. We want to mature and be more like you. We want to live a life that's pleasing before you. We want to love and have relationships that are meaningful. We want to impact and impart lives just to people who have done it for us. We thank you for the relationships that have been established on this call. Thank you, Father. What about the people that don't have a declared victory, that don't have strong relationships, that don't have loving relationships? We pray for them and we lift them up. We lift up the body of Christ that's struggling right now in all kinds of things. Father, there's a long prairie list, and, and I hear it every morning here lately that there's more and more people. We know that we need prayer. This is a prayer call, God. 
You said that men should always pray, that we should pray without ceasing. You said the fervent effectual prayers of the righteous availeth much. Father, prayer is our way of communicating with you and then your way of communicating with us. We lift up Tanya before you, whatever is going on in her body, and we declare that by your stripes she is healed. So we speak power and strength to her body right now and anybody else on this call that may be suffering with illness. And we know, God, that we, your word says that healing is the children's bread and that we can lay our hands on ourselves and declare that we are healed in Jesus' name. We can have our blessed oil and do it ourselves. So I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. You sent forth your word and they were healed. So we send it forth now in Jesus' name. We bless you. I thank you for JC and her daughter, Jania. We lift her up before you and we command that, that, that peace and that trachea, that it would, that stint, that it would stay in place and do what it's supposed to do until it completes its mission. While you keep slipping, the enemy might be at hand, but whatever it is, maybe it's the fault of the, the physicians, whoever it is, but we command you to stay in place and do what you're supposed to do and function well. Do your job in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We lose your angels that have charge over that situation and whatever might be done in error. We speak for uh, information and education and for those who know what they're doing to become involved, Father, for those advocates, for those who, who know how to properly care for tracheostomies or whatever interference that you would intervene, Father, in the name of Jesus, that makes no sense. And for it to be four times, something's going on. You know, Father, release the information. We pray for Alicia and her granddaughter, for Lisa and any other child struggling with addiction. Truth is, it's not just children. We lift up every adult and every person struggling with addiction. You told us, Father, in your word over in Philippians, if we thought on those things that were lovely and pure and of a good report, that's just a prayer phrase, but the peace of God that surpasses all understanding would guard our hearts and minds by Christ Jesus. You said be anxious for nothing but everything in prayer, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. That peace would guard our hearts and minds by Christ Jesus. So, Father, help us to set our affection on you. Help us to keep our minds stayed on you so that you said you would keep us in perfect peace. So help us to teach our children to do that. Help us to show them how to get in the word. And even if they're not accustomed to reading it, help us to show them how to switch their minds from the things they're thinking about because that's the thing that's keeping us bound, Father, our thinking. We bless you, Father. Thank you. We lift up Tracy for her birthday. Happy birthday, beautiful God. We thank you for another year of celebrating life and not just celebrating, but thriving, not just surviving, but thriving. Father, so we bless you for her life. We lift up Ishmael and you're on the call. So I thank you that today a word will be spoken in your ear to encourage you to keep going. So Father, we bless him and we lift him up, that you would strengthen him to raise those two babies and to let him know that he is not alone. So we bless him and we lift him up. And God, we lift his arms up just as Moses' arms were lifted up. And we thank you, Father, for the necessary help that you shall send him to lift up those babies to know that you have not dropped him. And we lift up Ruth and her family, Father, that you would give them comfort as they lay to rest their niece, their daughter, their mother, their aunt, for whoever she was to the family. We bless them, Father, and we pray for peace. God, for them to come together and love on one another, um, that they would draw strength from one another, but first of all, from you. I lift up Rick as he's getting ready for his procedure um, on tomorrow at 3 p.m., that you would um, see it through, God, that whatever it is that would be so, um, shown um, through that procedure, that the CAT scan that um, it's already done. Sometimes it just has to be identified, to, to be rectified, to be corrected. So we bless you for it already being done. And we lift up Susie for the sciatica. I think she's been dealing with waking up with pain. But she would set her free in that area. But she's still calling in. She's still 
showing up. Bless her, God, and bless her indeed. I lift up Monica for her to open her mouth, God, and say she's struggling with addiction. We declare that that taste be taken out of her mouth and that she be free, God, but she's opening up her mouth, crying out for help, praying for a desire, God, to be free. I pray for a willing mind, God, to leave it alone. Thank you. She is on her way. When you deem to see fit to deliver and set free, that she is free indeed, it's on the way. Thank you for it already being done. We speak to everybody struggling with addiction. She's not the only one, but she opened her mouth today. Deliverance is in the house. So, God, we thank you and we bless you. Even though those prayer requests were spoken today, we know they're not the only ones, but they were the ones that were called out. So we come into agreement and alignment with those requests and every unspoken prayer that was not called out. And we say, have your way, God. Your will be done, for it is your will that we prosper and be in health, even as our souls prosper. And we thank you, Father, for you've declared and decreed some things over our lives. And for that, we bless you. We thank you for being God and being in control and sovereign and already knowing that it's already done. So we stand up and we wait for the manifestation. And while we wait, we rejoice and we bless you and we lift you up. So as we take our phones off of mute, we say thank you. We love you. Thank you, God. We adore you. We bless your name. You are wonderful. Thank you, God. You're amazing. You're incredible. You keep working miracles out in our lives. We love you. 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 Thank you. 
What you yeah. giving your daughter to give up? Yeah. We say thank you, God. We say, thank speak, Jesus. Lord. Your children, your thank daughters, Jesus. your sons are listening, and we are ready to receive. For forgiveness is our portion to extend to others. Speak, God. We're ready. We can handle it. It's time. We pray for your daughter that she would pour out everything you poured into her for such a time as this. We bless her as you blessed her, and we thank you for her and the gifting that you've given her. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, God. As I pass the call to Dion. Amen, amen. And God, we bless your high name, Jesus. I am, as always, extremely honored to share my mornings uh, now for the last eight years with some of what I consider the most amazing people on the planet. I am so grateful um, for each and every one of you. I'm grateful um, that God would trust me um, to even have something to say, something worthwhile that would I'll push you into promise and to purpose. It's Wednesday, y'all. You know, it's my favorite day of the week. It's the day that we have set aside for fasting and for prayer. I, as always, extend the invitation to each and every one of you to join us as we uh, petition our Father, not just for more things, but more capacity, a greater grace, a deeper understanding, a greater revelation a level of maturity that pushes us into places uh, that ensure that we are accomplishing that which he sent us here to do. Uh, Before I begin, I want to wish Tracy Lawrence a very happy birthday. You are loved. I am so proud of you and the strides, the great strides that you have made to not just get connected, but to stay connected to uh, our in growth and in purpose and in promise. Greetings to each of you. Uh, I pray that this morning finds you in great spirits. This morning, I thought I had an agenda of, and or an objective. Uh, Tanya and I were going to teach together, but she is still under the weather. And so I know uh, we mentioned her in prayer, but um, I'm excited even in her brief being down as God heals places in her that perhaps she didn't even know existed. I'm excited about what she will be able to give us uh, as she recovers. So we have been uh, delving into and deep diving into this, this topic, this theme, which I think is one of the most pinnacle processes in um, kingdom living getting to a place where we understand beyond our finite measure that forgiveness and even receiving forgiveness is a major step in embracing the reality that we are sons, kind of like the the prodigal son. Um, He had one thing in mind, but the father had something else in mind. What you discover as you journey into purpose and into promise is that For some people, they struggle uh, with repentance. They struggle with the apology. They struggle with putting language to their lamenting. They struggle with exercising the vocal ability to say, I apologize. For uh, any any leader, uh, any person that is responsible for building people, what I've discovered is that there are some people that'll simply say, uh, hey, Dion, my bad, Um, or hey, uh, shucks, uh, Juju, my bad, whoever, you know, um, they will instead um, 
begin to change the behavior or approach as if nothing ever happened. And the reality is when you really forgive someone, it's like nothing ever happened. Um, it's not that you forget the offense. It's not that you downplay the offense, but the truth is we are all called to reconciliation, which is the price that Jesus paid when he surrendered, he submitted his entire life to ensure that we would have access to a greater life in more or greater abundance. Um, there, there is a thing, and I think all of us are familiar with this thing, and this, I call it the P word, pride. In the Hebrew, it's called pagav. And um, pride, in, in most cases, will prevent you from the promotion that you anticipate if, in fact, you don't uproot or pluck out um, the core or the, the reasons why you don't have the capacity or the ability to apologize. In some cases, that P word will require um, some deliverance, keeping in mind that deliverance isn't always about hacking or rolling on the floor or coughing or sneezing or crying even. Sometimes it is just a matter of making a decision to operate from humility and meekness. Now, if you are the type of person, that's just who I am. That's just how I move around. That's just how I do. Well, that's fine. But what that demonstrates is a lack of maturity. What we have discovered on our travel during this course, during this, um, the last now 26 days, we have discovered that we often find ourselves in um, places that we didn't realize we were childish, not childlike, the difference, right? We, we have discovered that in some areas, we all need to, as my grandmother would call it, come up. Uh, as they say in the Church of God in Christ, say, you're going to have to come up a little bit higher, <laughs> right? We have discovered that um, some of the soul tears, some of the emotional wounds, some of the experienced traumas um, in areas of our lives have stunted our emotional growth. Uh, you'll hear now a familiar term, we lack EI or emotional intelligence. Right there, there are... Uh, specific quotients or plateaus. Sometimes if you get too comfortable, you'll plateau at a place of growth and not give yourself the full ability to not just adapt, because we also have to have an adaptability uh, intelligence. There are times and seasons in our lives where God is trying to take us to different places and propel us into uh, a greater grace and push us into the processes of, of promotion, but we have to give ourselves permission to annihilate pride. Sometimes as um, just in, in the operation that I'm called to, uh, because of the nature of how uh, God has assigned me to deliver information sometimes, sometimes it is, it is difficult because people don't necessarily, quote, unquote, understand, right? Um, not initially. Majority of the time uh, when, when I have to deliver information, um, it is not always the fluffy, frilly, uh, you're going to get a, a house in 30 days. You're going to get a car in 30 days. My responsibility is to pull down, pluck out, and to um, bring to light and or attention um, something that may be difficult to approach, only because he's given me, he has mantled me with a different type of boldness. That boldness, are you? You okay? All right, perfect. Um, I I didn't know if you felt okay. Okay, I'm excited, you guys. My sissy feels up to to talking. I'm gonna finish this sentence and then we're going to go um, in a little bit deeper. Um, nevertheless, as as time has gone on, what I've learned how to do 
is not just release people, um, <clears throat> but give myself permission not to take anything personally. Um, so much so that I have, um, I, I don't think you ever master anything, but you absolutely can um, get to a place where certain things are just kind of water off a duck's back as opposed to everything being offensive, everything needing a defense, everything needing um, a correction or bring attention to. And you give people the ability to be themselves throughout the process. Um, Tanya and I this past week went um, out of town and last week, last Thursday, as a matter of fact, we left to go to Los Angeles with the expectation that we would go to Los Angeles and turn right back around and come back. Well, sometimes forgiveness takes a longer travel than you anticipated. And I'm talking about that deep forgiveness, the kind of forgiveness that not just frees you, but frees the generations after you to move around in such a way as if it never happened. Can you want to come off mute right quick? Can you hear me? I can. I can. Um, I'll, I'm going I'm to set you up right before then. While while we were planning to go on this trip, um, because we had a really long drive ahead, and in my mind I had this bright idea, girl, let's just run down to L.A. and run right back as if I was 25. <laughs> However, um, the trip proved to be a little bit more trying than I expected, but I had no idea that it was surrounded with the concept and actually walking out what forgiveness really is, what it really looks like. And, and it wasn't, um, we didn't tiptoe over it, but in the interim, we both said, okay, now you get on here and you share, and we're going to, you know, tag on this topic and then get off the phone so we can get ready to get on the freeway. And dead in my tra tracks, the Holy Spirit said, tell Tanya, you, you can't rush. I don't know what the text was verbatim. I don't remember. She can probably tell you. So I text Tanya, don't rush. Take your time. We'll leave when you're done. And um, I didn't know that what I text her was not just for the call in the morning. It was for the journey that was ahead. I'll give it to you, Tanya. Go ahead. So, you know, I we go through the declaration and you know I get Dion's text which says Holy Spirit said don't you dare rush is what the message was so I was like okay whatever we will get to where we're going when we get there and we finish the declaration um, <clears throat> we go to the location we're supposed to go to um, the first event the first place we're supposed to go to and our lot my lodging I'm staying with my little god brother um, who's lived in LA for forever. So when I walk in, my sister is there and her daughter. And I'm blown I'm like, what are you doing here? You know, it's a pleasant surprise, but like, wow, what are you doing here? And I didn't say it last week. I was trying to protect her identity because she didn't know that I was going to be sharing. But my sister is one of the offenders that I was talking about last week. Um um if I had to weigh who I felt the hurt most by, I guess I can't even really do it because it, it, it was it, it, they were both right up there. But at, at any rate, we're there, and I don't feel anything, you know, because we've already had our our talk. Um, we've we've made efforts to repair damage, but there's still something there, right? Um, because this is this is this happened eight years ago. Um, there's still a little something there. I don't know what it is, but I'm doing my part, right? I'm cordial. I'm nice. I am. And it's not nice, nasty. It's not any of that. It's just really me being, you know, and I'm thinking, well, maybe she just has some stuff. I don't know, but, you know, I'm not tripping. So we were going to leave, we get there Thursday evening for our event. We said we were going to leave Friday. This is just a turnaround. I got stuff to do. It's supposed to be a church Sunday blah, blah, blah. Um, and so I said, hey, you know, if if it's cool with you, maybe we could just stay a little longer because I'm 
that was a long drive. I'm tired. You're probably tired. She's like, yeah, I'm like, cool. We tried to leave, leave three different times, and we could not. Um, <clears throat> now, what happened for me is that um, I just looked at her, and I was saying how much, God, I want our relationship back, you know, and wondering how how do we get back to that place, past that place where we were. Um, excuse me one second. At any rate, we we go to look at some homes, the model home. It, um, it don't make sense, but we go to look at some model homes. I think it was Saturday. Um, and while we're there, um, you know, I was just sitting in, on one of the couches and I was just meditating. Nobody was bothering us. Um, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit just you could feel the shift in the atmosphere, and I started to pray in tongues out loud. And everybody is a believer, right? And so they start to join in, and all of a sudden, I got this thought came up: Oh my God, what if, you know, what if they're what if what if people come through the door? And I said, Oh well, they're just going to get a dose. And I continued to move forward. I continued to press in, and I could feel. <clears throat> I could feel a shift taking place. I didn't know really what it was. I thought it was maybe about a home because I'm believing the Lord for a home. Uh, everybody everybody that was there actually were believing God for a home. Um, but, but, but so we continue to press in and all of a sudden this sweet spirit of worship overtook me and I started to sing in tongues. And I don't know how long. Dion said it was 30 minutes. I don't think it was really 30 minutes, but it was a while. And the Lord gave Dion a word behind it. And so we left. Um, we went to re- we went to uh, eat some lunch or whatever time it was. While we were at the restaurant, I looked at my sister and I said, I reached out for her and I said, I love you. I really love you. And it's time for us to tell our story because there are people in and out of the church. But my heart is really for the church, people in the body of Christ. When I say the church, that's what I mean. Really for the body of Christ. People who, um, if I've experienced something, um, you know, we tend to, I want you to know that there's a way out. And what we do, at least in the Church of God in Christ, is that we tend to, put on game face, our church face, and go to church as if nothing really happened, as if we're invincible and inside we're dying, inside we are hurting, inside we are, we're wanting help, but we don't know how to get it because we're too proud to say, I need help. And so I want to create a platform, any anything that has to do with my life, I'm willing to share it so that people can get better. But long story short, so I say to her, time for us to tell our story and so she said okay okay and then she began to share what she said and before I knew it I was crying I don't know if she was I was in my own space you know nothing was unseemly or whatever I'm sure people could see something was going on but I really didn't care about them this was about me and my sister it seemed as if there was a bubble around our table and we began to share And then Dion started to share some things because, you know, she and my sister were friends before we were. They are closer in age than me and Dion are. But that that introduction um, of my sister um, to Dion was a setup for she and I, for this ministry that we have now. When I tell you the release that I felt sitting at that table was absolutely, incredibly amazing and awesome. There was a, I didn't even realize there was another depth of forgiveness that was necessary because I thought that, you know, we had done our part. You know, she had apologized. She had apologized to Carl. Um, I mean, I thought, you know, but 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 this level of it, I, I didn't realize the wounds were as 
the wound was as deep as it was. And by me making the step, um, she said, I want what we had. I miss us. Um, and we were both feeling the same way. And so the release that we had was absolutely amazing. And so we actually went to church there on Thursday. We went to Revelation Church. And so I was like, okay, maybe we could get on the road first thing in the morning. Dion looked at me like, girl, it's church tomorrow. <laughs> we might as well go to church. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I don't have nothing to wear. And I hate to shop, so you and Sheena are going to have to find me something to wear. So we leave the restaurant. We go find something to wear. And <clears throat> we didn't have to pump and prime them to get up to go to church. And went to, we, got, we got there, and it was absolutely phenomenal. Um, I believe they found a church home. Um, and I'm going to stop there because it's um, getting a little bit more difficult to talk. I could probably answer a question or what have you, but I'm going to give it back to you. And so from from my angle, because we have walked this path together in so many different parallels with regard to forgiveness, especially forgiveness of a loved one, someone close to us, it meant that all pride had to be um, annihilated. It meant that um, there was no space or time or room for a uh, hobby spirit or stiff-necked behavior. It meant that, um, and, and from my angle looking in, Tanya told it how she saw it, but there are different things that are behind the scenes. The fact that um, Sheena was actually at the house had been a secret. And, you know, in the, the family secrets, the family dynamics that set you up for unforgiveness at a later date. It was not just a surprise, but it had been harbored. And so even to walk in and, and her be there, um, I don't think either of us recognized what God was doing in the moment, but sometimes forgiveness takes surprise. It takes those elements that weren't planned or um, anything other than ordered. This was an ordered healing process. And we literally, you guys watched as she spoke it into existence. And while sometimes we feel like we've forgiven people, there are greater levels and deeper depths that we have to go into to get the full release, right? Because we understand that in his presence is fullness of joy. Now, while Tanya said she, she started speaking in tongues in the, the model home that we were in, we all began to worship. And there was a spirit of worship that rested in that model home, nobody came in, nobody interrupted us. We all sang and we sang together. Um, we give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised, right? And so in the process of doing that, you could literally feel chains breaking, everybody in their own location worshiping simultaneously. And then later at the dinner table, it wasn't just Tanya crying. It was a great release. And her baby, uh, her Tanya's niece, Tashina's baby was there. And she got to see what relationship looks like. Tanya and I um, collectively, because for me, I could rejoice because I got to see my friend receive a greater level of healing just by the act of forgiveness. I got to see places in her that for real, um, I had never really seen my friend mad. I had never really seen her annoyed to wanting to throw a bucket of ice <laughs> or ice water, whatever she had said. No, ma'am, you, you, can't, you can't do that. Your witness, ma'am, hold up. You know, you, you are the reason that I, I'm at the place that I'm at on many different levels. But to watch and to see and then to see um, to Sheena and her best friend um, experience what we were able to do collectively. It was a beautiful thing. It is another reason why even in learning how to operate in forgiveness, to have people around you that say, um, maybe we ought to proceed this way, maybe we ought to proceed that way. And we had laughed and talked about how retarded it was for me to suggest that we drive, <laughs> especially an electric car 
that you have to pull over every hour and a half to charge. I was like, what was I thinking? But what I realized is because God always has a greater plan than what we understand. And he will use any means necessary to get us to the other side of forgiveness. For us, the sacrifice of driving, because had we flown, we would have had a flight to catch. But because we drove, we had the flexibility of staying as opposed to one day, we stayed five, the number of grace. So now here is the impartation for grace to grace, right? Here is the impartation of not just experiencing forgiveness, but embodying it and having not just a good time, you guys. I can't even explain um, not just the level of enjoyment that it was, but everything about it was cathartic. Everything about it was sacrificial. Everything about it was authentic. Everything about it was pure because we didn't have a motive. God had made an appointment for us, right? There was no expected. We were just going to church and coming back right? But God's plan is always so much greater than ours. And when your steps are ordered, you recognize when things change. When you live a yielded life based on receiving the forgiveness that he offers as a son, when you embrace and embody the fact that he has forgiven us as his sons, right? He has made it clear that any and everything, not only is possible, but there are certain places that you can't get to until you go through the process. There are certain things you can't access until you go through the process. And so what we had in mind turned into what God had ordained. But you have to be open. You have to be able to hear him and not, not keeping in mind that when I sent Tanya the text about not rushing, I had no idea that that word was for the journey. It wasn't just for the moment. When you are sensitive to the voice of God, even when you don't get it, even when you don't understand, even when you think you have it all figured out, he took that same word and gave us a greater grace, not just for the trip, but for our lives. See, you, you can't rush um, considering that time um, there's a difference between chronos and kairos time. This, this moment in time was ordained so that we could come back and tell you, hey, listen, there are greater ways. There's a greater grace. Our trip was effortless. And not only that, but while we were there, they treated us the absolute best. We didn't really, we went to the, the best restaurant. <laughs> I mean, and dined sufficiently. You hear me? And every time we went out and pulled out a card to pay for something, Mike was like, no, nah, I got it. No, nah, I got it. No, nah, I got it. See, what God ordains, he always makes arrangements for. It's always his bill. And what Mike doesn't know is even him just buying us food him making sure we ate. It's kind of like the uh, 5,000 and beating, being fed with fish and loaves, right? It's like there was always more than enough. Everything we thought we wanted, we had because we were under the auspice of orders of our king. We were under the instructions of the father. We were on assignment and didn't even know it. We thought we were going to get a word, but we were, ha, glory to Jesus. We were the word. We were the word in operation. We were the word in uh, the order of forgiveness. God gave us a tangible something to come back with, to tell you that there are greater levels to this. There are deeper dimensions. There are um, um, much richer realms, but you have to be willing that when God says move, even when you don't get it, because here I am just, uh, hey, Tan, let's run to L.A. And she's just a special, okay. <laughs> All right. Right? We, we didn't have a big grandiose plan, but I heard something. I responded. I shared with my friends. And you've got to have friends that hear God, not just for them. But for you, I didn't realize I was hearing God for my friend to get healed on a level that she didn't even know she needed healing. And as a result, so this, this, she started to get sick right after they had the conversation. So I, I want to give you some identification marks. 
sometimes our souls need healing on levels we did not realize we needed it, right? And so God will put us down to build us up. And I'm sure that even after this is over, because I know my friend, I'm sure she's meditated and asked questions. Okay, God, so what is this, 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 and this? Because I know her, right? There are processes that God will take us through to get us to a place where we are built up in the spirit and we can operate differently in the natural. So with all that said, you guys, I, I, I want to give you some scripture because we, we've just been talking. But um, let, me, let me give you what the Lord gave me, probably literally right before the call began. I'm going to give you guys um, a couple of different passages, and I want you to take them. Um, and I want you to study them today, especially for those that are, um, for those that are fasting today. It will be great for your meditation time. Matthew 21 and 32 reads as follows. And for John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you didn't believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you didn't repent and believe. There are moments where there's a level of repentance that you owe. Your offender, right, for even holding them hostage to their immaturity, holding them hostage to uh, their lack of capacity or inability to find repentance in them. Sometimes they don't have the demonstration because the reality is I'm sure that the offense that Tanya felt is not the same offense that Sheena felt, right? But you got to have uh, the, the grace to be the, quote, unquote, the bigger person. Let me give you another one. Luke. 17 and 3. And so watch yourselves, brother. If your brother or sister sin against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them, like for real, in real life. Let them go. Release them. Now, the, the, the funny thing about this, it says, if they repent. We always hear it said, repentance is for you. No, ma'am. When you know you've done something that was offensive, you owe yourself to repent, to whoever it is that you've offended. It is your responsibility as a son of God to be in right standing with the truth of who God says you are. Repentance is a demonstration, literally, of your level of maturity and humility. And we need humility to live. Humility is one of the greatest gifts we can ever um, give ourselves, right? Um. Matthew 3 and 8, to produce fruit in keeping with repentance. That means that we ought to repent and forgive frequently, often, as regularly as we think about it. When you have an offense in your heart, even if you don't know that it's going to take a deeper level, do the surface work until you get to the deep roots of the matter. Tanya was able to get to deep roots. Right? It's easy to live on top of um, of that, that rehearsed or that cultural forgiveness, that forgiveness that has something looming in the back of your mind, that has something in the cut that you still hold on to, you still hold them hostage to. You can, you know, be cordial in company, and you may not even, quote, unquote, feel anything, but in the back of your mind, you say, and I'm watching you, right? Forgiveness in real life means? It never happened. And you don't have to live over the top of stuff. You can start to live in fullness and in completion, right? Isaiah 30 and 15. This is what the sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength but you would have none of it, right? So if, in fact, you don't make a decision to repent and to forgive, you choose not to operate in the salvation that was already given to you. You choose not to operate in the quietness that's available as a son. You choose not to operate in the trust or the strength, right? We make active decisions on how we opt to live. I don't care 
what somebody did. My decision is that I want to live peaceably among all men. My decision is that I want to operate from a place of wholeness, not just from a place of healing. I want every broken area in my heart, in my mind, in my soul to be refreshed with the refreshing of the word. I desire to experience the fullness of joy that is offered as a believer that would help me to accomplish every single thing I was sent here to do. I want to leave nothing undone. I don't want to get to the mantle closet and there be a mantle that has my name written in it because I didn't have the ability to forgive. Every area that I'm called to go into, I want to be mantled to it. I want to be dressed for it. I want to be appropriated for it in such a way that lives change, not because I said anything, but because I lived something. And that I live something for real, that I'm not living on top of an idea, but I'm actually operating from a place of liberty, which is the only reason that he died. He said, greater works than these shall ye do in my name. You've got to be available for greater works. You've got to be accommodating to what he's already spoken over you. According to Psalms 139, 13 through 16, I knew you in your unformed state and all the days of your life were written before you lived one day. See, this five-day trip, which represents the number of grace, was indicative of the fact that I haven't just yielded my thought process, my life life is what it is. My life is a a specific spectacle for whatever purposes he has for me. This trip wasn't about me, but he used me, and and I'm not saying this in a high-minded way. I'm telling you so that you are aware that sometimes God will inconvenience you for somebody that you love. Sometimes God will uh, put you in a place where you think you have an idea for something you want when really he's trying to use you to extend his grace, to extend ah, glory to Jesus, to extend his love, to extend his kindness, to extend his mercy, to extend you having an opportunity to operate from a place of decision for forgiveness. It is such an honor to be fit for use. It is such an honor to be at a place where while I am in no way perfect, I'm available. That took a while, y'all. That's been a journey. But more than it being a journey, it was a decision. God, wherever you need me to go, whatever you need me to do, I yield my life to you. However, you need me to move around so that somebody else's life would be imparted into so that somebody else could see themselves on the other side so that somebody else would have faith and hope and trust and love so that somebody else would know that you are and you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you so that somebody else would recognize that you are hope and joy and love and peace, that you are uh, I am that I am, that every single thing that we need is in you. All we ever have to do is listen. God desires to heal our hearts in a great, deep way. He desires for us to have deep, mature relationships. He desires for us to be willing to be sacrificed, right, and to make the sacrifices necessary to bring somebody into fullness. Please, ma'am, please, sir. Don't allow pride to keep you uh, from operating in the fullness of his love, right? Don't allow uh, uh, your ego (laughs) to cause you to miss the opportunities that God is placing before you because what it does is it clouds your vision. It'll have you in delusion. It'll have you in fear. It'll have you in anxiety. It'll have you in uh, uh, depression. Unforgiveness will keep you from operating to your zenith. And so today, I want you to do the deep work. And and I know we've been doing it all month, but I'm going to challenge you today um, that even if you do nothing else but spend five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, not asking God for anything, right, not not harassing him about your agenda or your objective, 
but literally taking a moment to just sit in stillness and in quiet, no music, um, nothing to pump and to pride you in complete and utter silence. You'll find it's not the easiest thing to do. After about 35, 40 seconds, you try to find something else to think about. But I dare you today to steal your mind, to steal your heart, and to sit and intentionally entreat the presence of God and ask the hard questions, God, who am I still holding hostage in the dark places of my heart? Because we all got some. Who am I still um, arresting in my mind that uh, could could really be the passage, the exit, the entry for my next level. God, I, I, I got some things I want to see manifested. I got some things I would like to see happen. What is uh, the holdup, right? Because we all got some holdups, like for real. There are some things and, and some of the things that you are hoping to see in and through this relationship we have with this amazing God, and you're wondering why you're not making progress or you're not having any traction. Is somebody you hold in hostage. How dare us, after being forgiven of so much, yet hold people hostage to a lack of capacity? How dare us take personal all the things, literally, that somebody just doesn't have the ability to give you anything other than what they have, and you still walking around here mad. You still walking around here halfway killing yourself because they don't have the capacity to do it how you would have them to do it. So that being said, I've gone a little bit over. I give God glory for opportunities to do it differently. Um, I give God hey, honor. Yeah. God. Just before yeah. we go, go into love, Absolutely. Life and victory, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I had an epiphany um, while we were at church on, on Sunday. So um, all of this stuff happened. It blew up in October 2013. Eight years later, October 2013, my sister and I are holding hands, telling each other how much we love us. God is so kind. Well, what's the big deal about eight? <laughs> if you Google it, eight represents new beginnings. Mm-hmm. I'll say it again. Eight represents new beginnings. God is so mm-hmm. awesome, guys. God is so awesome. That's it. Mhm. Very good. Very good. Um, and so, um. We we have some really significant and and Tam, hey, did you did you trip off the fact that that my month was called surviving August, yours is overcoming October. I did not. <laughs> I absolutely did not. I absolutely October was a did mess. not. October yeah, it was. was awful. Yeah, it was awful. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but we have some significant numbers. Um, Josiah had been sick and I had been caregiving for seven years. Here we are with Declare Victory. I didn't realize that the two years prior was priming my heart for the process. I didn't understand that I was going to have to go through a journey of learning how to forgive on an extremely different level because I would have to teach each one of you Um, not just with my words, but through my life, what it looks like to forgive genuinely, authentically, and to be able to walk into the liberty where we we were saved. And now here, Declare Victory is walking into its ninth year, which is the number of new birthings. And so I'm excited about what God has done and is doing. I'm looking forward to what Victory City um, will actually do and be for the nation, not just for us here on the call, but um, I'm, I'm watching God build something only because of a yes. And so today, I pray that you would give God a fresh yes. Pray that you would have the courage to say, God, I I know it may be a little frightening to go in further. The the word says this, the deep calls unto the deep. There is a, a level of depth that God has Um, that he wants to get to you, that he wants to pull you into so that you are literally in relationship. 
right? He wants to pull you into places of worship and cultivation and development so that your heart is established for the work that you were created to do. Surely we couldn't just be here to go to work and have husbands and wives and houses and cars and children and there not be more. There is more, guys. There's more. We are, we are more spirit than we are person. And until you tap into that thing, until you are relentless about uncovering what that looks like, you will always feel unfulfilled. If I'm lying, tell me I'm lying. While the word says money solves all things, it's a terrible thing to have some money and no peace. It's an awful thing to live in a big fancy house and can't get no rest. It's a, a treacherous thing to have a whole husband and still feel alone. The only thing that feels that is the greatness of our sovereign God. The only thing that quenches all those empty places is his ability to love us beyond even our capacity to understand it, so much so that he'll set us up for greatness day after day after day, especially when you are in communion with him. Communion with him in such a way that you hear his voice, right? If you harden not your heart, if you give yourself permission to put your ear to the ground and to expect him to do something different in you, to expect him to revolutionize your life in such a way that lives are changed because you are open and you are willing, because you have given him a fresh yes, because you have given him full access to even the places in your heart that you didn't know were broken. He is well able to do exceeding abundantly, above and beyond anything you could ever think, hope for, or imagine. This trip for us was that. <laughs> It was it exceeded our expectation. We just was going to church, y'all. We was just being weird old church ladies like we like to do. <laughs> and God took that thing. And my glory to Jesus, he took it and he broke it and he multiplied it. The word says, great shall be the peace of thy children. See, this right here gave the devil a, a burgundy eye. <laughs> That's what it did. It, this right here, this knocked the devil off his block, straight up. That being said, y'all, we went well over time. There may be somebody that joined the call a little bit late. You didn't have an opportunity to say good morning. You know how we do it. We love to greet you. Anybody want to say good morning? Good morning. Good morning, Dion. It's pretty Patrice. Hi, pretty. You Come sound on. so pretty. Listen to that heart, baby <laughs> brother. Brother Jeff put it down on the trip. Feel me? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Brought that little ding ding back. Come on. Yes, I love what you sound like, Patrice. Oh my God. It's really, really nice. I like it. Y'all was looking so in love. I was hating. I was over here hating. <laughs> You know I'm lying. Y'all made my heart happy. Amen. I'm sorry. Anybody else? I, I went on a little tangent about my pretty. Y'all, y'all just don't know the story. Good morning, hey, good morning. Hey, good morning, Cynthia. Who else was that? That was Kendra. And for time's sake, I'm gonna uh, have to call you afterwards. <laughs> okay. Congratulations. Hey, Amen. Good stuff. Anybody Good morning, else? it's Kenya. Good morning, Kenya. Good morning, Mama Leomia. Good morning. Good morning, Miss B. Hey, Miss B. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, Miss Krishanda. <laughs> hey, Krishanda, and who else was that? It's beloved Barb. Great declaration. I loved it, and I'm just so thankful that I get it. <laughs> And I understand Amen. it, and then I feel my growth in this. So thank you so much. Amen. Good, good, good stuff, beloved. Anybody else? Good morning. It's Jubilant Juliet. Ju, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Anybody else? Good morning. It's Juanita. Good morning, Juanita. Good morning to my doula. 
Hey, good morning. Hey, good morning, you guys. This is Jr. Thank you very much. Love you, Tanya. <laughs> hey, Jr. Good morning. Good morning. This is Monica. Good morning. Hey, Monica. Good morning. Good morning, sis. It's Moxie. Good morning. Hey, Mox. Thanks for your video. I got it. It was super cute. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Um, real quick, before we go into Love, Life, and Victory, don't forget Sunday. Um, I think, is it this Sunday? Let me look at the calendar. Hold on two seconds. Um, yeah, this coming Sunday um, at PFBC, Tanya will actually be sharing the word if you are in the Bay Area. Um, there should be a flyer out today. You'll be able to go to my page, just the Radical Midwife, and find the flyer for um, the address to show up at PFBC. If you guys have, um, if we've never met, love to see you, uh, hug your neck, um, have a great time in worship. Why not? At, I believe it's 10 a.m. Can you correct me if I'm wrong? Yeah, it's, um, I know she's going to put up a flyer, but for those of you that don't okay. have Facebook or whatever, it's 3069 Research Drive, Richmond, California, and it's in Hilltop. It will not look like a church. It's a warehouse. It's an industrial um, area. So 3069 Research Drive. Service does start at 10. You can come a little bit early and get breakfast if you like. Um, they usually serve a really good breakfast that you pay for. All right, that's it. Amen. Amen. All right. Any questions, comments, commentary, um, anything? Good. Good morning, Saints. This is Sister Leisha. Good morning. And I, I know I'm so grateful that you guys took this time to let us, you know, take a peek into your lives and to see that this forgiveness thing really does work. You know, what came up for me while you were doing your declaration was surrender. Because if I don't surrender completely to God, there's no way I can hear from him. There's no way my heart can be open enough to forgive. You know, prior to maybe just a couple of years ago, it was always about, you know, me and what I wanted to do and how I thought it should be. But after going through different trials and different processes, I've learned not my will, but God's will. So that's my prayer daily. And I find that because I'm open to his spirit, he can drop things on me. Like I might be somewhere and he'll say, give that person $20. And I'll think, and I'm like, okay, let me just be obedient because the devil's not going to tell me to give nobody $20. And so, being surrendered to God, I can do his will because it's not about me anymore. And I think what I'm finding in certain churches, and I'm not going to say all, that too many people who profess Christ are not surrendered. They're not really saying, God, not my will, but thy will, from the preacher on down. They got a hidden agenda. And I think you once you take the hidden agenda away and you get back to God's will, that's when you can forgive. That's when you can move the way he wants you to move. So I just appreciate this call because I get to grow up. I'm not a babe in Christ no more. I got to cut my teeth on some meat and potatoes. You know, milk is for people who are starting out, but not for somebody who's been saved for a long time. So thank you so much for listening. Very hey, good, good morning. Thank you. Hey, good morning. Yeah, um, I think that uh, when you do, uh, when you all do um, declarations of this nature, it helps people uh, do a real life application. So it really helps you see into the life of forgiveness, because then you could say, I know those people. And you can use that as a template or a model. So thank you for being authentic and thank you for being real and giving us a real life story and an example, because that really, really 
helps because then you say, oh, if Tanya can, or if Dion can, and then you apply it to your life, and then that gives you a template and a way because sometimes we're visual or we're we're hearing it, and then we learn from that. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank thank you, Wonder Twin, and and I agree. I think I do best with um, authenticity. You know, when you like, we didn't have an agenda, we didn't have an objective. But the, the beautiful thing about learning how to be open, um, how to be, okay, somebody, who, who's, who's that? You may need to mute your phone. Um, about being available to the things of the kingdom is life begins to change when you give yourself permission um, to operate from a place of liberty, right, where, where you don't have to be in control and I think control is one of the hardest things we all have to relinquish on this journey is because culture will tell you um, wh- while we are in control of our destiny, don't, don't get it twisted, we are being led, we are being ordered, we are being sent, we are being um, propelled, we are being um, drawn into the places that God has already designed for us to receive everything that we need, considering all we do is activate it because everything you need is already in you. The ability to decide to release somebody, the ability to give someone uh, permission to be themselves without you having an expectation of the outcome all the time, right? We can't make people acquiesce to what we think they should be or do or say or feel or any of that. Amen. Anybody else? Questions, comments, commentary? Anybody? And if not, I know this morning was a lot. <laughs> we said a lot. We experienced a lot. And and sometimes you just got to sit on it. So the silence is is fine. Hey. I get it. Yeah. Hey. I have something. Hey. Didi. Um, wow. Wait, hold on, hold on real quick, Dee. Who else was that? So you, I can know so you can go after her. It was Kedra. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Dee, Dee and then Kedra. So, um, Tanya, I'm a, I'm a hug your neck real hard when I see you because you made me lose a lash this morning, but that's all good. Just just that freeness and that oh my God, I'm so just grateful for your for you and your sister mending that that deepness. Um, but Dion, when you said there's no access until you go through the process, is that what you said? I was trying to did I, I, I did I mishear know. you? Yeah, but that know. right there, yeah, it's true. So all of this, just doing the surface is good, but to get that soul healed, because we need a healing for our soul. So all the, you know, the saying of this and doing of that, but that real deep opinion, you, my sister, and you too, Dion, y'all freed me because there's two people. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, that I have to to do that. I have to go and and just get that that deeper level because I didn't even know it it existed either. So I'm thinking I'm good, but I'm really not because I still feel a way. You know what I'm saying? I'm good around them, but whew, thank y'all. I love y'all so much. I'm just grateful for the, like EK said, you do it in 3D so we can see it. We don't got to just hear about it. But, and, and to say that we know you, like know you for real. Beautiful. I love y'all. You, you hear the babies coming in. Let me go. <laughs> Amen. Go ahead, Catcher. Thank you for sharing. Amen. I just wanted to say real quick. Um, the Bible teaches us that pride comes before destruction. And I, if we don't, if I, I'm going to use an I said, if I don't release that pride and forgive, and because um, I have a situation with, you know, um, people that are in my life, and I'm like, uh, okay, well, I reached out. I did my part. You know, you don't want to do what I want to do. I'm holding them hostage for not living life or not doing what I want them to do. So I just have to be mindful that pride comes before destruction. And ain't nobody got time for none of them. That healing the whole is what's happening. So amen. I thank God for you and declare victory. Amen. And good stuff. Good stuff, good stuff. I did my part. I remember those days. Well, I, I said sorry. <laughs> amen. Anybody else? Good morning. Good morning. This is Sister Lisa. Great decoration. I, I think you and Tanya, hey, hey, for your um, 
share. Uh, Sunday, me and my sister, this has been going on for like 20 years. Uh, she's older than I am. She went up on the call one time, and then she didn't call back, and I encouraged her to call back. Anyway, at church Sunday, um, I told her I would be back because we in the worship team together. She joined the church. I'm grateful for God for that. But we were able to sit in the room finally together without being at each other's throat. I have to be having agape love for my sister, love for her. You, you know, it starts at home. And uh, I'm learning to God, you know, to give me that, to get that on my heart, to have love and kindness. Uh, even though when she say things like trying to, you know, just be the older sister, you need to do this, you, you know. And so I need to learn how to have patience. But she started crying and wanted to leave the church. And I told her, you know, you don't leave because of me. You can't leave and give up on God, not even for me, you know. I, uh, if I said anything that you didn't like by me saying I'm going to drop off my grandchildren, you know, her nieces, then you, you can't leave. But that's something that she has to work that she's still holding on to because I love my sister. But, uh, yeah, we need some more work to be done. But I'm, I know God is able. At least we're sitting in the room together. So I thank you so much. And um, I am so grateful to where he has me at so to forgive and I had to go in and ask people to forgive me, you know, for holding hostages and saying things that, hey, God is in control. You got to love. If you say how you love Jesus, how you going to, how you going to just not love your sister? How you not going to love your family? It starts with your grandchildren. And I had to learn that without uh, being angry. And it's, I have no more bitterness. I thank you, Jesus, for that. And this forgiveness has really touched me. And open my eyes that no matter what they say, what people say, or whatever, you still got to forgive them what they don't, they don't know what they're doing. But God, I love him, so I have to love. And then uh, this morning, I have to go to school with my granddaughter. And the teacher, uh, she's the one, she has anxiety real bad, so she gave her life to the Lord Sunday. And I'm grateful for that, that you need to get, Jesus can get you through this. And Grandma loves you, and I'm praying for you. And that you got to trust God, and you, we have to work together through this thing. And she's 16, and so the teacher, her gym teacher, told her um, about her tennis shoes was fake. Um, you know, uh, she's not going to make it, you know. And I, I, I had to pray on it last night. I have to forgive that teacher for saying this, but I will address it this morning in love and tell her, you know, that you're supposed to encourage the kids. And I'm asking you, you, the, uh, you know, I have to go in there after the Lord, the Holy Spirit, you lead and guide me my word this morning when I address this gym teacher. Because her tennis shoes have nothing to do with it. Uh, you're the teacher, you're a grown up, and you have to, kids are getting discouraged and they already going through enough so that can wipe her right on out because she's new in Christ. She's trying to trust God and through grandma and looking and seeing my walk. I am so grateful. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to you, God. You get the glory Amen. and the honor. Amen. I'm, Amen. I'm here now, God. I, I say yes to you, Lord. Yes. And that's for them, for, for my grandchildren, for all children. That's her, you know. And, and we got to stand, and I got to let her know this morning that, hey, hey, you, I don't know what you, but you can't talk to her that way. You can't discourage a child, right? And, Amen. And I'm listen, right now. listen, all, all you got to do, all you got to do, Lisa, is keep being love and light before her. That's it. That's okay. it. It's not, not acquiescing to old behaviors. You be consistent. Okay. You continue to live a life of faith before her. You continue to love her even in her brokenness. Don't worry about the outcome. We're not responsible for how people respond. All we can do is extend our greatest grace as God has extended it to us. That's it. You keep going. I'm so proud of you. Very Thank good. you so much. Progress. Not Thank you. perfection. Thank you. Progress. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. In, anybody else? Hey, it's Krishanda. Good morning, and God bless you. 
I um, am thankful for you guys' declaration, and I just think it's just so beautiful to watch hmm, how sisters, and I'm sure brothers do it, but just watching sisters hold each other's hand through the process for deliverance and for healing, Um, how you guys show up for each other. Um, And I'm so grateful um, for the healing that's taken place. Um, Yeah, and um, yeah, it is a process. And and I I just thank you for this teaching. Um, Blessings to both of you. Love you. Love you too. Thanks, Krishanda. Thank you. Um, I wanted to add something um, to this. Um, We're talking about being realistic and authentic. Um, There are times when we attempt forgiveness and it's rejected by the other person. That's not your fault. That's not your problem. You have a responsibility to do your part. Now, God will God will handle the other person, but you you can't make somebody forgive you. And I, I want us to be aware. Um, this was this is, and I, I misspoke. I said it was um, nine years. It, I mean, excuse me. I said it was eight years, but it's actually nine years. Mm. Um, and 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 the and the biblical meaning of nine. Hold on one second. I just I just pulled it up so we can be clear. The biblical meaning of nine is. It symbolizes divine completeness. I'll take that. Div- mm-hmm. It's over. It's done. Mm-hmm. It's finished. And that's how I feel. But going back to, because um, some of you might be on the line, I tried that and the person rejected me. Or or, or you may do that and the, and, and the person may reject, reject your attempt at forgiveness. You've done your part. I want to reiterate, you've done your part. Um. Because when I, as I as you were talking this morning, I reflected on a time, but my heart wasn't in, in it completely. I, I that was my fault. I I attempted to to let her know, you know, I love you, and I was in front of a whole bunch of people, family members, <laughs> and if you know my sister, well, I love you too. <laughs> the neck rolling and everything, right? So it wasn't, and she knew where I was going, but she rejected what I was attempting to do, and I was cool with it. I didn't realize that that I was in an icky place. Um, or I wasn't in a real, there was still some pride there. I didn't realize it. My point to you is don't get discouraged if, if, um, your repentance to someone, if you asking them to forgive you, if it's not accepted and it doesn't turn out like my story did, it's okay. You've done your part and you give that to God. I hope that makes sense to somebody. Amen. Amen. I'm glad you said that to me. Mm-hmm. Important. It's important. Anybody else? Oh, yeah, this is Ruth. Go ahead, Pat. Hey, Pay. Uh, hey um, I, I wish that more young people that are going through the unforgiveness um, part of life could hear this message. I wish that my niece, um, again, who passed on the 15th, uh, uh, could have heard this message, and I think that this message is directed to my family, for my family, for me, for Ishmael, if he's still on the line, to hear, because my niece, um, she passed, unforgiving her mother for not raising her, and we knew that because she was recently before her passing, she was really her brother passed in '95. But she never got a chance to call her mom and mommy. She never got a chance to have a relationship with her. And she would say, my mom gave me away. Although my mother raised her and did the best that she could do, and she seemed to be really happy throughout her life, but she had a host of cousins and everything. And a man, Ishmael, that loved her to no end, and it was set to get married. She still felt that void of her mom, uh, you know, not being there for her, and especially through her engagement and all these things of her son, the birth of her son, she um, there was a part of her that didn't forgive her mom not for being there. But what you said today, and I've, I've heard it before, you can't expect people to give you what they don't have because not only did her mother not raise her, she didn't raise none of the other five kids. And then moving on to my daughter, my daughter's 40 years old, and she sat at a funeral, her cousin's funeral recently, and her dad was there, and she she was so hurt. She, she said, my dad, mom didn't even speak to me. 
and she and, and that's not the only time that they've been in the same room where he didn't say nothing to her. And I had to explain. I say, Miss Sean, I didn't call her name, but anyway, I said, you know what, baby, he just don't have it in him. And I said, you just have to keep moving on to be the best person you can be because, again, he didn't raise none of his kids. So it's just not you for some people, some parents, or some people, you know, they just don't have it in them to be parents or, you know, they wasn't, I don't know, whatever happened, they just had kids but didn't take the responsibility on to be full parents. And my sister, who is 40-something, so I, I'm, right now it's kind of crazy because I'm dealing and talking to people that are holding grudges and 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 and, and, and going through this parental uh, parental avoidance at forty, they, you know, it's just like it's hitting them, it's hitting home right now for them. And I told my sister again, who's in the forties, that baby, you just gotta, you know, you gotta just keep going and be the best mother that you can be. And and thank God she did uh, for her kids are now in college. One graduated with her master's. And, you know, you just have to keep going. But there's, there's something about, you know, this, you know, right now, a lot of people are dealing with loneliness of the parents not being there. So for Alexis, um, Ishmael could be there, you know, and he has to today deal with the mom, you know, that was never there for Alexis. He has to deal with that. And we have to put all bygones aside, everything aside, and deal with, you know, bearing Alexis, but not hold those grudges that Alexis had with her mom. I just, Bless her heart, and I just pray that you know um, that she's resting in peace. You know, because I know what she did. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Good stuff. Good stuff. Anybody else before we? Um, yeah. Um, I just want to say uh, this is Monica. I want to thank Tanya for uh, sharing her that uh, declaration about. Um, her and her sister, because when she was sharing that, it brought up, you know, the the relationship that I have with my sister. I remember feeling that same thing, like I miss my sister, you know, and that it seems like our relationship is distant, you know. I know it's probably a lot of things in there that I couldn't even really go into, but it's just... um you know, I feel like I've went to my family enough times to ask them to forgive me, but for some reason, I feel that they look at me in my past. They don't look at me where I am now in my life, you know, and how far that I've come or how much I've been working on me, you know, and so it's hurtful. To me, I feel like I'd be in a lot of pain concerning my family, you know, and um, so I kind of just stay away from it because it'd be too much for me, you know, um, but I'm looking for, she gave me some hope today, you know, that I can um, look forward to a day where I, we can come together and you know, have that that sister relationship again. And, um, you know, I'm grateful. Um, I'm grateful for you guys, uh, you know, because it's helping me to, um, to open up a little bit because I've been in a real shell of my own, you know, not feeling like I want to interact with people for a number of reasons. Um, but I realized that, um, that a lot of that is, could be satanic and demonic. That's trying to keep me isolated from family and people. And so I'm seeking God for that to change, you know? Um, so thank you guys for the direct declaration. Um, it blessed me yeah, thank you for sharing and recognizing that it is an attempt of the enemy to isolate you is half the battle. Like you winning just with that statement. Anybody else? 
Hi, good morning. This is Sister Tracy. Um, thank you so much, Tanya and Dr. Dion, for your tackle team on this morning. Um, just grateful. I'm grateful because what Tanya just said um, a little while ago, as far as you do your part, but you can't force people. Once you do your part, you can only just say, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do something, and let it go. I'm, I'm grateful for the growth that I've had um, for the eight years that I've been on Declare Victory, and I could have never made it as far as I have if it wasn't for listening to each and every one of your declarations, sitting back, just uh, buckling up and plugging in, and I'm just so, so, so grateful. Still growing and learning, and I'm dealing with something uh, as far as, um, you know, I asked one of my girlfriends, we had gone through something, the same process, and I asked her to forgive me, and we talked about it, and then like months ago, she came back and said, I, you know, I still have some residuals, and I'm like, I'm sorry, but, you know, I have to, I guess I just have to sit and wait for the process, and just let God do what he do, because I did my part, and I can't do no more than that, so I'm just grateful for this morning's conversation and that I was able to be on the call to listen. So thank you. Yeah, good, good stuff. Thank you for sharing, Trace. Yeah, appreciate you. Love you. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Patty. First, Pam. First, I believe uh, it's Sister Tracy's birthday today. It is. Is that correct? Happy birthday. Yeah. I came on the call late, so I don't know if you guys already talked about it or not. Um. You know what God reminded me of the scripture um, that we die daily. I don't know why that just did something to me when I was reminded it's a daily dying to the flesh. It just it just meant something so strong to me because I believe even us as believers, you know, you you go and you know I think about the scripture. Uh, be weary, uh, don't be weary in well doing, but it's a daily getting up, like we're talking about, you know, how to be more, better disciples. Um, we pray each day, each day. So I don't know why I just want to share that because it just, it just it was a reminder for me to just, it's a daily walk. It's a daily a dying of the flesh. Um, I can't do anything on yesterday's food as they would as the scripture has said so um i just want to say good morning i love everyone on the call god bless you and everyone have a blessed wonderful day today amen good stuff and it is a fact we die daily it is important to die daily anybody else good morning this is Lori. um i just wanted to say i i actually missed the call today, but I will be, um, you know, going back and, and listening. Um, but I just wanted to add that um, I really, really, I love this call, and I love that it's um, accessible for me. And um, I wanted to also add that uh, there's a movie called Disregarded Things, and if people haven't uh, seen it, um, please watch it. It's, it's about forgiveness, and it's really, really good, and it touches on a lot of what uh, you've been talking about this month. And thank Super you. Super dope. Sherry. I'm going to go Hey, Lori. I'm so <laughs> glad you Hi. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. I'm, every single time that you say something, um, you may not feel like it's a big deal, but it is. And I'm super, super proud of you. I'm super proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. And I thank you so much for everything. I really do. Amen. Well, if that be all. Quick question. We... Sure. Do I, um, I have talked to you. A while back, um, when I used to go to this one church, do I, um, I don't know, do I need to um, go back and repent or is, is everything all well? 
I repented to the that one person pers- um, that I talked to, and he went to the first lady. But do I need to go and repent to any of them, or am I good? I I'm asking because I don't know. No, I know. Did you do something to them? No. Okay. No. Okay. The, o- the only I, you, I just... you'll know mm-hmm. if you need to if it's weighing on you. Okay. Is it weighing on you? You feeling heavy? You feeling like you need to repent? No. Okay. Well then, no. <laughs> you all right? Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. No problem. Anybody else before we release the call? Amen. Well, again, today is our fasting day. We fast from 5 until 5. We meet right back here. Just fill our prayers with a praise. Um, and, uh, yeah, I pray that, that something happens today that will propel you into purpose a different way. I pray that your yes is more deep-rooted. I pray that you're able to exercise from a place of forgiveness. Um, I pray that you have the capacity and you're not too proud to repent. It's important. Um, And and I, I pray more than anything that you know that God has a great plan for your life. To agree with him concerning that plan will not just change your life, but it'll change every single life you are connected to. It is the dopest thing to be surrendered, but not just surrendered, available so that you can hear the voice of God, not just for your life, but for the lives of those that you love that are connected to you. I encourage you to seek the Father and his plan, his will, and his process for moving to your next. There is so much more. I love you guys with the love of the Lord. I'll hear you right back here at 5 p.m. today. If not, we'll hear you tomorrow morning for uh, the Thursday declaration. I love you, but I promise God loves you the most. Bye, God. Bye-bye. Have a blessed day, everyone. Bye. Have a blessed day. I'm going to call you. Have a blessed day. Okay. I got to take care of something. Give me.